Welcome everybody to my chess stream here on LeechS.org. We're going to be playing 5 plus 3 Fast Friday. Sorry guys, I had to go get Panda. What's up Bob? 5 plus 3 Fast Blitz today. It's Friday, we're going to be just taking all the challengers. Is this guy streaming today? <clears throat> I had a really bad uh, sneezing attack just a minute ago, guys. So I had to, uh, had to get myself under control. The panda can take over in an emergency. I was sideways. I'm so sorry about that, guys. I hate when I do that. I have a little trouble realizing, like, you know, which way I'm facing sometimes. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the stream, Bob. We're just going to take the challengers in order if they have a hundred games approximately. Um, I don't want to play people with unestablished accounts. But if these people do have a hundred games plus in non-bullet games like this, 548. They're very similar, aren't they? <clears throat> Check them out. There's Mela Hamavati. He's got like only blitz and it's 548 games, around 1800. An I-10 year old is got 322 games. I think they're the same person. It's a conspiracy theory. They created two accounts just to play me. No, I'm just kidding. Um, we're going to take these challenges, guys. As long as they're casual and 5 plus 3. I'm big on conspiracy theories here. By the way, um, don't use tissues with uh, mint, mint smell while you're drinking coffee. You, you taste it tastes like you're drinking mint coffee after that um, not a good idea <clears throat> all right yeah that's I, I don't like flavored coffees I mean I don't know if anybody out there really goes for the flavored coffees but um, that's not my thing pumpkin spice what's up Bob what do you think are you a coffee drinker Mela Hemavati I haven't played this player? I have. Yeah, I'm 2-0. Oh. Okay. We've played them before. The symmetrical English is useless for black. Is that you, Mel Blank? Or is it just a coincidence that it's Mela Hamavati and Mel Blank? Mel Blank, of course, um, wasn't that like the the voice behind Daffy Duck? Characters like, like that. Um, Anonymous is here. Let's play. We get to play. We never get to play this variation with Queen B6. Um, kind of a cool sideline. Take people out of their usual book. <clears throat> Greatest voice artist of all time. So, but is that the proper spelling? The A N C K? I can't remember. I watched so many cartoons when I was a little kid. can't remember a simple thing like that anyway um, yeah I'm Mel Blanc as far as the Ponda voices just with the C you know everything Bob sometimes it's frightening so Mela, Mela here played Knight B3 yeah that's the best move according to theory I get a lot of Knight C2 for some reason <clears throat> but this um this is the main line phone is making noises in the other room. Beep, 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 beep. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for the 100 donation, Mel Blank. Is there any relation between you and Mel uh, Hemavati? Just a three-letter coincidence. Um, <clears throat> Nils, good to see you. I take you've been busy. You haven't been on the stream quite as much this week. So bishop g2, and now, <clears throat> well, basically, I, I have two strategies for playing these kind of stra uh, structures. There's the d5 um, sometimes, but I'd only be likely to do that if we were to play a3, probably keeping my, keeping a, what does a3 do, actually? a3 is supposed to stop bishop b4 check, but bishop b4 check doesn't seem particularly relevant. Kind of all a mystery to me. Did I miss something good already? I think maybe I, I made a mistake already. So let's see, g3. Maybe I'm supposed to play knight e5 here. I think I already messed up. <clears throat> I 
if I play knight e5 right away, I could press pressure c4 and threaten stuff like queen c6 to kind of destroy his coordination. Man, I haven't got a chance. I never get a chance to play this line, so now I forgot what I'm supposed to do. Great. And a lot of times they, they insist on playing a3, but I don't really understand why that's necessary either. Again, I guess it's about... What does it have to do with that pawn, though? Knight e5, it makes it hard to protect this. Queen b4 check is pointless. Um, weird. I don't know why white has to play a3 in these lines. You see that very often in, in theory. <clears throat> Anonymous played against Feingold and won. Congratulations. Of course, it's not as big an accomplishment as beating me, but close. Bishop g2, knight e5. <clears throat> it could even transpose to uh, a similar variation. But I don't understand why white would need to play knight c3 in the first place so early, and why would a3 be necessary, as is recommended in a lot of theory here. Is my last move just stupid? I'm basing this on the fact that if he has to play knight d2, I can play like queen c7, and he doesn't have a knight coming to b5 to harass my queen. But it all seems rather stupid. What am I going to do like say knight d2, queen c7, never mind. It's still early, guys. <clears throat> I was going to ask a very stupid question. I'm much, I'm much tougher than him. Simon is a meme. I don't know. Simon and I, I think, in our blitz games in life, in in past, are about even. I've never, yeah, I did play him once in a tournament game when he was a little kid, but he wasn't that little actually. Um. He, he he and I drew <clears throat> against Feingold and, and 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 Simon. I have combined three draws. Queen c2. That's actually probably better than playing knight d2. Um, <clears throat> all right, bishop b4 check would just develop a piece, so there's that going for it. Any guy that has a GM title was super strong to attain a title. I wouldn't go that far. There are some suspicious. There, there's some isolated, suspicious titles out there. But um, strong. Let's 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 change the wording to strong. Um, but Feingold and Simon Williams are are legit, I guess. <clears throat> Bishop B4 check. I'm just getting my pieces, my pizzas out here. D6, make sure he can't play C5. It's not overly impressive, my setup, though. Yeah, but Simon's inconsistent. Actually, they're both of those guys um, are inconsistent players, and that defines them, I would say. <clears throat> not the pictures of consistency. Simon Williams and, and Ben Feingold can both play great and bad games. Um. All right, guys. We're just trying to get our pieces out. We got the bishop out, then we closed the pawn structure on the dark squares. I can't figure out the theory on this line. I mean, why do so many people recommend? I've seen in books like literally a three on move five recommended. Not not move five, move six. Um, what is it? Move five, knight b three. Move six, a three. I've literally seen, but. It just doesn't seem like it would be necessary to do something like that. My bishop's about to get stuck outside the pawn chain here. <clears throat> I would imagine white is a tiny bit better right about now. I need to get my king out of the center for one thing. Um, that's a strange capture, but he wants to put his other knight on c3. The site, the site we don't talk about for good reasons. 
All right, bishop c6. Do we want to do that? Do you really want to? I mean, if he plays e4, he's going to have himself a Marazzi with a bad bishop. So I guess I should probably play bishop c6. This is a lot like a accelerated dragon, where I'm basically trying to create a dark square bind. <clears throat> but I think that black is pretty comfy here. Comfy. a5 can be thrown in. Um, bishop c6, a5 is, is okay. Wait a minute, are you just blundering? Oh my gosh. One move tactics. You're kidding me, you're just giving me a pawn? That's so sick. Knight takes c4, I almost didn't see it. It's like move 11, is move 11 here? This is a move 11 style tactic. That's so unfair. He played queen b2 and he actually like voluntarily put his queen into a worse position. It looks safer on b2. Wait, the monetization is pretty aggressive. Um, I think that's the only way to do it though. Like, if you don't have aggressive monetization on, on YouTube, like me, you basically make like 50 cents a month or something. It's totally rigged against the YouTube creators. Um, all right, so knight takes c4. They're basically forced if they want to make any money at all, Bob, I think. All right, that's terrible. He just blundered there. Man, that's... I wouldn't resign, though. You lost a pawn. Don't give up yet. I mean, that's ridiculous to resign. But anyway, thank you for the game. Too early to resign for one pawn. Deficit. Ten-year-old Scotch. He's like, I ten-year-old. All right, we get it. And suspiciously plays the same move as our last opponent with the same rating and the same approximate number of games. But we won't, we won't go in for conspiracy theories today. Challenging us at the same time. G3. All right. Moksudlu. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Can anybody verify Iranian pronunciations? Parham Moksudlu. Bishop G2. The first round of the World Junior featured... Uh, Knight c3. I'm going to go in for h4. Pineapple. <clears throat> Lord Ananas. He's spelling it differently than, than Ananas, the player. So the first round of the World Junior featured this h5 line. I mean, I think it's a great way to go if you really just want to be a psycho. And the Ponda approves. Ponda approved. Parham Moksutlu. <laughs> hey guys, everybody knows h5 is always a good move, right? Indich played it last year in a tournament. Um, he's like 2600. I love this h5 thing. It's, it's almost sound. Ananas is the other guy. Yeah, he's a subscriber here. Or has been a subscriber. Okay, so now we transfer to the ambulance variation. Now we transfer to the um, the bishop c5 type lines. And uh, I featured this in a recent video on chesslecture.com, which hasn't been released yet. But, but the idea is to play a f5 break. And if we want to play an f5 break against the Sarawan response, that's what I, I have a name for everything. If we want to play the f5 break against the Sarawan response, what we need to do is put our knight on e7. And we got it all worked out. <clears throat> Lord Ananas. No relation to Ananas. All right. So the 10 year old is not clear if it's a person or a scotch. But um, I'm getting to play my, my Moksutlu variation. And White is playing. Uh, the traditional type of setup here. Maybe I ought to play a6 at some point in the near future. Scoville has subscribed. No, they're continuing the gift sub they gave to Nils. Wow, okay. I'm sorry. I misread that. Scoville is continuing his gift sub he gave to, to Nils. Benjamin, aka Ananas, is a man, and then we're not related. 
Oh man, I'm gonna start a sneezing attack. Excuse me. I may have to like step away from the computer. I actually didn't sneeze, but I thought I was going to. I might have to step away from the computer at any moment. We've got very high pollen count here. Hungary, they decided that cutting out plants that cause allergies is not a high priority. Wow, F4, this is very uh, mega aggro. Wow. That's quite the system there. And if he plays F5, he's going to make me unhappy. If he shuts it down with F5, this is a new system here for white. <clears throat> this is like literally my first time playing this. <coughs> um, wow, this is a cool response. Um, how do you meet that? Should I take? That doesn't seem right. Um, well, I have no clue. It doesn't seem right to give up my center, but if I allow f5, it's going to be hard for me to kind of free myself. Maybe I should play f5 anyway. I haven't even got my knight there in time, though. Crazy. We go ultra-violent here, like clockwork. Clockwork orange. f5, this is a little psycho. But if I don't do it, I may never get to do it. If... If he plays like pawn takes pawn, bishop takes e4, uh, he would shut me down on one diagonal, but I get the other diagonal open. This is a little crazy, guys. But I feel like if I just play routinely with knight e7, he's going to play f5, and then it's going to be really messed up. Kind of like I have to do this before it's too late. He's shutting everything down with g5. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, I guess we keep the flexibility that we can here. But this guy's he's 1858. He's reacting really well to this. Very creative approach, you know, securing the space there with f4 and g5. I don't think that most people would do that. It's it's definitely not a bad idea. Look at this, just fully grabbing all the space. Now I practically have to play e4, going into a bizarre situation where most of the board is locked. But I have my space too now. So, tuna. I'm not sure if this was, was best played by, by anybody, but I know knight b4 drops a piece, unfortunately. It's kind of a weak move. Our knight doesn't have a good path. The position is very locked. It, it looks like the kind of game that could easily be a draw because it's like so closed. Neither side would be able to break out. A3, he should probably keep me off of B4, getting in there. But even if I got my knight to, to D3, he would probably be able to trade it off with like knight C1 or something. Crazy irrational situation. I hate the closed Sicilian. Why am I playing it? This wasn't supposed to happen. There is no good square for my, my king knight. Um, to play the really demented knight a5, that doesn't seem right. All right, I don't know. There could be a p sacrifice on e4. He goes Timon style. That's a grandmaster caliber move, but I mean, I, I don't know. He gets like two pawns for a piece to unleash the pawn center. Definitely something you should think about. Now it's probably not quite as dangerous, still dangerous though, this possibility of sacking a piece here. Outside the box type of move. Um, now what do I do? B5 will lock the whole freaking position. I mean, it's a safe move, but I mean, how the heck am I going to win after that? 
maybe we have some chances to, to grab the white squares. And then it's going to be extremely hard to break it open. I'll have an A5 break that's almost impossible to, to make. He could still sack a piece, though I don't think that's right. Just demented position, totally closed. Likely draw because neither side can break it open, I would say. It's like checkers. Guys, don't give me extra time, okay? We had that the other day, but not necessary. The games drag on, and I want to keep it fast so that more people get time to play. The temptation in a position like this is like give the other guy more time, right? I mean, it's going to just turn into silliness if we have no time left. My, my sneezing attack is about to start again. I really, I don't want to take like allergy medicine that makes me fall asleep. All right. D5. Another possible pawn sacrifice here. We got our bishop to, to a good square. But it's going to be so locked. I just don't think that either side can win. Okay, I'm not going to play D5 unless I have to. You know, maybe that way we keep a little bit of play in the position. I'm scared of this knight takes e4, though. I've been scared of it, you know, in the past. It's like literally nothing for anybody to do here. That seems like kind of an unnecessary, <coughs> unnecessary maneuver, but maybe not bad, actually. Knight b3, he's got knight b3, knight a5. He's trading off my bad bishop here. That might be a, construed as a mistake. Not really sure what to do though. What would Moksuhu do? My bishop on a7 is not a happy camper right now. Then again, all bishops are not happy campers here. Oh, he's trading everything systematically. 1858 seems like he's better now probably lost my will to live this is a bad move He's just your standard Lee Chess 1858 player. Now clearly, clearly in trouble. If A5, B4, and I'm lost, probably. A4 just, I have to close the position with A5. No, this is my only hope. I can lock the, the king side, the queen side or whatever. But this guy's pretty suspicious for 1858. His handling of the early opening with like f4 was indicative of a player quite strong. Now, unlikely it's going to be easy to break through here. Maybe I can sack a piece myself at this point, or start thinking about sacking a piece. This sacrifices on f4 should be doable. There's enough dynamism here that it's still possible for one side or the other to get something going. Um, yeah, we're definitely going to Sack a piece for two connectors. Three connectors or three pawns for the piece. He finally succumbed to a tactic. But he's a tough 10 year old 1800 Lee Chess player. All right, I was probably like worse there at some point. It's a new account without too many games. But he seems pretty good. All right, Baleful's up next. Strategically, strategically timed out. This guy was f four was a unique move, man. I mean, that's not the man. That's not the move of a beginner. That was kind of like mature way of handling the situation. B three from Baleful. We'll just continue our ways. 
a5 and now c4 naturally um what are we gonna do just react it's a fast time control five plus three for me as far as i'm concerned the a5 is actually a move <clears throat> it may seem like ridiculous but if we can play a4 and break up his structure it's actually quite reasonable Guys, thanks for joining me. Five plus three challenges. We're not favoring the subscribers here. This is just a thoughtful idea. I was actually going to play b6. So you may have stopped me from fianchettoing my queen's bishop here. Now I probably have to play d5. It's a form of reti if he plays bishop g2, knight f3 now. I've seen Elvest play this. Elvest has left the building. Jan. Jan is a tough customer. We had an Estonian player the other day. Of course, Elvis is like the only Estonian player who I really know. Um, okay, bishop g2, bishop e7, knight f3. I mean, you could do something weird like knight h3, but... I think a5 is actually quite a quite a known line here against the Reti. I'm hesitant to play a4 because he could take it and maybe try to hold on to it or something with knight c3. If he puts his knight on d2, it's harder to hold on to that pawn on a4. How am I supposed to develop my other pieces, though? What would Jan do? Um, a4 doesn't really constitute a plan. <clears throat> a4 pawn takes pawn, then we can target it, I guess. Let's go ahead and do it. If he takes, we'll just attack it with stuff and then pick it off and have the better pawn structure. Bishop d7. You like a5. Skull. Now the question is, what do we do? Do we play a3 just to be weird? No. We would probably want to keep our keep our options open here <clears throat> Bishop d7 seems a weird move but Bishop d7 95 Bishop e8 you gotta just go with the flow I guess and play with your intuition sometimes <clears throat> this is kind of a strange development Admittedly, of course I can put my knight on c6. It's probably not that bad. I can even put it on a6, actually. Funny and counterintuitive, but why not? <clears throat> Blocking my own rook along the a file. I could play like a b a b knight b4, just have a good outpost for that piece. The white remains extremely solid here. I'm not lagging anymore. Um, you know what? I don't know. I'm just totally speculating. But there was just an update for Streamlabs OBS, like a kind of big update. I had to actually download it, and it took like a couple minutes to. It took a couple minutes to actually um, upload. So I wonder, you know, if that could possibly have to do with it. Um, lower my encoder settings, maybe ensure I don't have any other applications open. That you're heavy on my CPU. Okay, so I got some. It's, it's like it looks like it might be related to the update here. Let me take care of that later, though. All right, baleful. I don't know. It's just a possibility. I want to blame everything but myself. I'm not used to using the Streamlabs OBS though. It's totally, totally new to me. Okay, e4. If I play c6, I'm afraid. I don't know what I'm afraid of. This looks passive, though. He's kind of begging me to get in there on d3, isn't he? <clears throat> Let's see. Knight c5? Knight c5 allows e5, and it's probably too passive. What if we were to play... Pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, knight c5. He's still going to have a lot of space. 
How about pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, bishop c6? He's got knight to d4. Ooh, that's, that's not good. Bishop e8. This is a strong move. What are we to do here? I don't know what to play. Tempting to just make a random move. I'm trying to keep the tension, but it looks like my position is a bit a bit passive. It's a it's a passive Catalan after e5 98, um, admittedly, but still it's not that easy for White to do anything. You know, I mean his bishop will be blocked by his own pawn there. I want to make sure he doesn't own me in the center. Wacky Wednesdays. This is not a Wacky Wednesday. This is just Fast Friday. He played knight e5 instead, which is uh, more keeping keeping the, the tension in the position. I expected e5, gaining space. This is more temporary in nature. Rook e1. I feel like in this position I should be all right. He took with a knight, which I didn't expect. Watch this diagonal, kids. He's not into taking back with the pawn. That's weird. This is like it's gonna look. It's gonna start looking like Nakamura Grishuk or something. I can play f6, kick him out, and then go knight c5. Ha ha. You're going to have a problem. A bishop on e8 is like genius. You know, controlling h5, there's no none of this stuff. Um, Uh-oh. His bishop's trapped on f5. Wow. Well, I was going to play knight c5, but if I can win a piece, I guess that's better. We take pieces in all denominations. Bishop takes. And f6 was just over. It's all over but the over. Well, there's still the time issue, I guess. He, he's got two pawns for the piece here. I'm going to play f4, try to break in there. Maybe not the safest line. <clears throat> I shouldn't take this too lightly. He has two pawns for a piece, and his pieces are still kind of active. So, got to be careful here. It's all ogre. I mean, his king side does look pretty sketchy. I mean, admittedly, f4, pawn takes, rook takes, and then his king is, like, getting raked with the bishop on c6 just raking this h1 a8 diagonal um, now he's giving me further material okay this is this has got to be a lie he has 95 what am I doing alright it's fine we can give back material I'm not a selfish person <clears throat> please don't let any accidents happen here 95 bishop f6 Everything's okay. Raking the diagonal, Bob. Are you going to do any coverage of the World Chess Olympiad? You didn't say World Chess Olympiad, but that's what I said. Um, I don't really do, like, coverages. Just fun. I mean, it's not to say that it's not, not a possibility. Um... I definitely will be following the Chess Olympiad. This is a great event. Um, in the past, when I used to work for some sites, we would cover the, the tournament. It would be great, of course. All right. Where is the Olympiad again? 
I'm forgetting now. Is it just me, or is it a strange time to have the Olympia? It's not like traditionally in, in September, is it? Why why do I feel like that's that's not normal? Coverage. Yeah. Unfortunately, we, we don't earn enough to do full time, full time chess uh, coverage. I'm only streaming six days a week, two and a half hours. But um, I could uh, discuss it a little bit. It's in it's in Georgia. Wow, what a surprise! They only hold chess tournaments in like three, three countries, with the current FIDE administration. It's like Turkey, Iran, and Georgia. Um. All right. King G8. This is over. That A pawn could be the winner. I <laughs> love that pawn. Yeah. Mr. Pawn. Ponda. Baleful's not giving up. In Russia, Olymp Olympiad, time to choose you. <laughs> Say what? The Mr. Ponda. Ponda wants the Olympiad in China. Actually, why doesn't China like hold a tournament like that? They're not into chess, really. There's only like 0.000073% of the Chinese population even know what chess is. Despite the fact that they're like number three in the world overall or something like that. It's still like almost no one knows what chess is. Even though they're like number one. They'll be number one in the world. And like 99.99999% of Chinese people won't, won't know what chess is. They'll have like the top 10 players in the world. Still no one will know what it is. All right. Rook takes... I think Baleful can give this one up. You're kind of dragging it out here, buddy. All right, it's mate. I should probably play mate instead of rook takes a1. I have a problem with that. Interesting game there. Welcome everybody to the stream. Gazim, Nils is up. We're not taking subscribers in order, guys. We're just taking all the challenges. As long as you've got 100 games. I'm just playing whatever I feel like. It's not weird Wednesday. The pesky A pawn. The bishop on a8. Let's try something different. If chess became popular in China, yeah, the game would just be finished. Seriously, like, there are just too many people. It would they would totally dominate. I shouldn't like tempt fate. Knight c3. E5. I'm supposed to play. Just as the poker people act like, what? They know what they're doing, but in reality, they're all flipping coins. Just as like poker. I said chess is the poker. Um, well, I mean, in a way, yeah. It's true. I mean, especially in the middle game. I mean, openings and end games we can narrow down pretty well, chess fun. But, yeah, truthfully, yeah. I, I kind of agree with that in a certain in a certain way. I mean, you take two countries like India and China, and they're both extremely populous. But India has a history with chess, you know? I mean, it's not like people in, in India didn't know what chess is. There's a huge difference between India and China. I mean, Indian people have been playing chess for, for many, many years. Um, whereas in China, it's like an alien game, basically. <clears throat> it was just a matter of time till an Indian player became... And then, you know, Anand came along, basically. This move I'm not sure about here, playing knight g6, because he can hammer me with the, the Ponda attack. I wonder what I should do. What would Tobias do? You bought us. You almost have to play knight g6, though. I mean, d6? Okay, I, I should play d6. 
that transposes to a rapport system. A rapport. 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 Rapport recard. No, I mean, I'm, I'm wrong there. You know, knight e7 is a bad move because, I mean, knight g6 is a bad move because of h4. I'm pretty sure. I have to play the, the Yabatis d6 here. Transport to a Rapportian. A Rapportian, King's Indian, most likely. <clears throat> um, they have other games in China, um, but they also just don't, you know, know what chess is because it's just no cultural heritage for the game at all there. Um, they could have like maybe if there was a world champion that that might make a difference if one of the Chinese player became became actual world champion that would be interesting or played for the world championship it, maybe it would really have an effect um, but until that time it'll still just be like who what's chess Queen C2 this is a good move he's just waiting not committing to anything special I'm waiting for h4. This is just a matter of time. It's a really good move against the knight on g6. I mean, g3 is not a bad move. Bishop g2. And now, we're on our own. That's what Fritz used to say. Well, eventually I'm going to play d6 here. a5 defended my bishop on b4. If you're wondering why I played this move, I don't now hang a piece with queen a4 check. Um... All right, anyway, so I was asked about the Chess Olympiad, and anybody know, is it typically played in in September? It doesn't seem to me like the Chess Olympiad was usually in September, or October, whatever. I thought it was like at a different time altogether, but maybe I'm wrong. I've been known to be wrong now and then. My knights got to re reposition from G6, probably. Where would it possibly go to a useful position? On, on e7? Not really. It has no good path, more or less. I was literally thinking of going back to f8 and play knight d7 and knight c5. That might not be a bad idea. I, instead, I played bishop d7. And now my bishop on b4 is wondering what its point in life is. It's going to take up a new location. A theater near you on C5. So September 21st. Oh my god, it's Sparkle Horse, my little pony. We're bronies. Chess bronies. Just poking fun at myself a little bit, but um, I'd like to have some fun and joke around here. The brony. Knight g5, thematic, controlling an e4, nice move. Well, we got to do something. We're gonna have to, wow, he didn't even hesitate with that. The Ponda attack again, h5. You're like inducing me to do h5, but that would be a strange thing to play with your knight entrenched on g5. I definitely, definitely don't wanna do that right away. But Nils is doing a good job of just keeping the tension here. It looks like I'm gonna get busted if I'm not careful. Actually, bishop there. Allowing him to play e4. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. I don't know what to do. Man, I don't know what to do. Nils is doing a great job keeping the tension on here. I'm just going to have to start making random moves. I hate that. You know, I like to really try to play the best move. But I'm literally, like, literally forced to start making moves that I have no confidence in whatsoever, like bishop d4. I seriously doubt that's the best move, but I'm just playing it because I have to play a move to not lose on time. I hate to be in that situation. That's why I get in time pressure so much. I don't like to be rushed, you know? I hate when people rush me when I'm eating my food. 
um, for example. Chess is the same. Don't rush me, Bob. What do you think about chess in Iran? I think that Iran is growing insanely in chess. I mean, I just did a game where Moksutlu beat... Uh, this, the, he won the World Junior Championship. He's also won the championship of Iran. But um, I think that the ch Iranian chess is, is growing crazily. It's uh, pretty impressive. I mean, there was a time when chess was basically not allowed in Iran. And um, some of the Iranian chess players I know from the United States immigrated, you know, around the time when chess was, was not permitted or whatever. And and they, they were happy they could play chess in the United States. But now that chess is, is permitted in Iran, basically, um, it's growing by leaps and bounds. Uh, it's it's possible <coughs> that, that Muksudlu or this other guy, Frugia, I'm not sure how you pronounce his name. Um, they could become like top top players. They're very impressive. Okay, I guess I have to play f5 here, but my position is starting to look a little bit doubtful. Chess was banned in, in Iran for a long time, of course. I have some good friends who live in the States, they immigrated like in the late 70s. But now it's a different policy, and uh, the Iranian players are getting really, really good. World Junior Champion is Iranian, Moksutlu. And he's a really interesting player, very aggressive and creative. Um, Knight C3. Also on Lee Chess, there's a lot of players from Iran. But they have a history of chess. I mean, it's not like, you know, chess was basically invented. Wasn't chess like invented in Persia? Some people say. So, okay, India claims the origin. No other country is well known. I mean, it's not clear to me where exactly chess was invented. I wasn't there. Some people say, you know, India. Some people claim like Persia. But chess kind of morphed over time. It wasn't like invented one day, like here it is, it's a finished product. It seems like chess spread and, and migrated, you know, through different countries as it as it like changed and, and the rules were changed and it sort of, you know, grew. Um, E3. It evolved. That's perhaps a better word. It evolved. Chess is still evolving today. It's a living organism. We got F4 again, like um, that earlier game with F4. There's some parallels. Okay, the time, the time. Queen problems. I have queen problems. We gotta solve our queen problems first and foremost. Maybe we gotta just take that out. We gotta do something, we gotta make a compromise. It should be four perhaps though. Man, tense game here, Nils. Tense game. Cheaters used abacus. Wait, wait, wait. Are you going to tuck that back on c1 after rook d1? It's a cool idea. It's a cool way to get the queen in the, in the game from a7. I was like that. Someone mentioned our subscriber Acerbate earlier. Um, was that you, Bob? He resigned, dropping a piece. Um... Acerbate's obsessed with playing rook a7. I, I prefer the queen a7. But Nils just dropped a piece on a4 here. We're in bad time pressure. It's a tense position. I feel like white has a small plus here. Let's see what the computer, the oracle says. It says it's equal. 0. 0.1. 
zero. Interesting game, but I felt like White's got a little bit of superiority in the center somehow. But I guess it's not that not that relevant. Queen b8. What should I play? My queen's already in a strange square. I realize I have a queen problem. It's it's destroying the coordination of my pieces. If I play e4, you know, he'll have a g4 break later on at some point. The engine wants to play this. But my concern is that white will eventually break out with g4. Maybe not so easy to achieve. Anyway, it's hard to play these closed positions. This is not the first one we've had today. Um, Gazim, we've got a challenge at chess 960, which I don't mind if you're an established account. Um, chess, the chess therapist. Chess therapist. I've got really bad allergies, guys. If I sound strange, I'm not sick, but um, they need to chop out the ragweed here. All right. Um, Gazim. 2005. Closed positions are horrible in Blitz. <clears throat> Welcome everybody. Thank you for supporting the stream. Thanks for uh, subscribing. We got 41 viewers today. Um, so we were just talking about chess in the world, how it's growing in different places, and uh, and in Iran, China, India. A lot of countries where, let's say, 20 years ago, you know, the game was a lot less developed. It's um, it's now being dominated by these countries to some extent. I remember when the Chinese like had their first Olympic team in like 1988, I think. I think it was 88. They might have had one before that, one one more Olympiad before that. But the one that I really noticed was 1988. Speaking of the Olympi uh, Chess Olympic coming up, Chess Olympics, A5 is a really kind of strange move here if I haven't really committed my center yet. This is very early. Know where all the gold in India is stored. <laughs> That's random. Okay, guys. Um, just taking all challenges with 5 plus 3 time control casual. Anyone who wants to play, if you've got a hundred games or more, I'd like to thank Merle Dixon, Juicebox Wizard, Juicebox Wizard, Mel Blank for donating. Did I? Yeah, I did notice that. All right, you guys are awesome for supporting the stream. <clears throat> I know the one game is Chess Nine Sixty. That's cool. I don't mind. Chess Box One. Chess Station. Does PlayStation still exist? Chess Box One. Chess 360, you don't know what that is, Lord NNS? Well, I guess it's not Chess 360. Someone called it Chess 360, okay. I understand now. Chess 960, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Chess 360. Did I say that too? I might have said that I'm still half asleep. I'd likely re repeat anything you said in the chat if I was not having my second coffee. I'll just believe you guys. Chess 560. I've got a Chess 960 challenge here. I actually prefer the Fisher random name. A lot of, For a lot of people, Fisher's controversial because of his political and insensitive anti-Semitic remarks over his life. But I mean, I still don't think that should change us from being able to call it like Fisher Random or something. Um, it's easier to say Fisher Random than Chess 960. Chess 960, like, it just sounds weird. Um, all right, Rookie 8. Indians are getting better and better speaking in English. Well, they generally speak English in India, man. It's the only language that like unites all of India, in a way. They're good at speaking English. <laughs> they always have been. Um, one of the only countries, I mean, where almost everyone understands English. 
You saw the Chess Grandmaster game on PlayStation? I don't know that. You mean Chess Master? I don't know that. Too old for PlayStation. I never had a PlayStation. I'm too old for it. And I'm... And I'm too... Too, uh, too clueless to know if it still exists or not. Chess Master on Game Boy. Zen Chess sent me my my own like game analysis from Josh Whiteskin. I talked about this. He sent me a link yesterday to uh, to my win against Josh Whiteskin on the Chess Master, analyzed by the video commentary by Whiteskin, I guess. Infinite Flash Chess. We just had that sent in yesterday. I don't understand how Fisher Random Chess was invented in 1996 when he spoke of it for years and years before that. Well, I guess, um, you know, this, this quote-unquote invented is... Um, is it like... I mean, did Fisher ever try to, like, copyright it or something? It's a good question. He was very upset when people would steal his ideas. He was very upset when people published books, you know, with his name on it, too. Like, the, there was this one really, really popular book, Bobby Fischer Teaches Chess, that he didn't actually approve or whatever, you know, and they, they published millions of copies. I have one. I don't know what, what became of that, like, legally, though. You know, like how you can just use the guy's name and publish a book uh, without his permission um, seems kind of questionable. It's very, very borderline. So could he copyright Chess 960? I mean, I guess it's, it's kind of a gray area. Very similar to Bronstein, right? Bronstein patented what the time isn't it like I thought Bronstein had to do with like the time control you know the idea of incremental time I thought was Bronstein but maybe I'm confused I was just thinking about this Lord Ananas and uh, someone asked me the other day about Chess 960 and uh I was thinking, well, Chess 960 will never be popular in the world, basically, until, like, actual tournaments exist. I mean, it's nice that the billionaire from St. Louis has his little private soiree, you know, to publicize Chess 960 with Kasparov, you know. But, but Chess 960 will never, ever be popular if you don't organize for the general population some kind of tournaments. Um, I was just thinking that. So, it's, it's, it's interesting. I've never ever seen a Chess 960 tournament. I mean, I know that they exist at things like special special things like the the Czech Chess Festival in 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 uh in part of Bitsa. in the summer they have a chess festival, lots of different types of tournaments, but that's one of the only places in the world where you could probably play in like a Chess 960 an actual Chess 960 tournament. You could count them on one hand probably. Um chess and poker. Where am I going with my queen here? McQueen. McQueen. You thought Bronstein's idea was that both white and black had to choose the position. Okay, you might be right. Wow, Spinal Tap Chess is here. You tried to run a Chess 960 at your club once, and three people showed up. Well, I think you know, you know, you from running a club. What's up, Spinal Tap? Good to see you. You know from running a club that that's probably going to happen. I mean, in the beginning with that kind of thing. You got to be very patient. It's like it's like growing a plant or something. I mean, you just got to be very patient with it and, and like be milking it. Like you'll get three people the first time, four the second time, you know, and you're never going to get like a hundred. Well, it also depends on what kind of prizes you're offering there. You get the uh, chess royalty to sponsor it or something. Um, but I mean, I think you got to start slow. 
I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Chess 960 could take off, but it would take a concerted effort from a lot of different angles. Yeah. Spinal Tap finished third. He was the filler. <laughs> What's up, man? Long time no see. You totally were MIA on my, on my American-based streams, Spinal Tap. I guess you're, you're better off with the 4 a.m. being the Prince of Darkness. Um, all right, we don't want to let him play Bishop takes b5. What am I planning here? I don't know. Gazim's got a little bit of time pressure, but this this might seem strange. I'm not, you know, I don't freak out when I have 11 seconds in 5-3, in, in and I also don't try to play for the flag when my opponent has 11 seconds in, in 5 plus 3, because it's just not realistic. F4 weakening my king side, weakening the E file. But he can't, he's in no position to try to take advantage of that. King H1, this is a useful move. Maybe I should consider King H2. He's really squeezed here. But it's also hard for me to break through. I probably need to I probably need to play E4, F4, and, and F5 or E5 to kind of make progress. And G4 is another option. It's not ridiculous here. Probably should have put my king on. Could have and should have put my king out there. All right, we go for it. The advantage of not playing e4, we can actually play quite a different game here. It feels a little like a Smyslav, King's Indian to me. Yeah, he's in, he's in a lot of trouble in this position. He just missed the boat. You missed your boat. All right. He was under pressure. Just flag him. You see, you can't. I tried to do that against, like, the first time I lost in, in increment time control. No, it was time delay. When they first started using time delay, I tried to flag someone and lost. It was, it was like, 2003. I think I lost against the... Uh, Teddy Coleman or no it wasn't Teddy Coleman somebody like that it was like a game where I was like winning and better the whole game then it was a draw and I just didn't accept it because he had no time <laughs> and I just tried to win on time and lost creeper land is challenging to casual one day okay I don't do casual one day um, MGH is challenging to chest 960 this guy was really strong if I remember correctly mass general hospital Good to see you, Spinal Tap Chess. What's up? So, are you streaming yourself these days? B4. Well, this was... No, I think I did lose in Chess 960 against MGH, if I remember. Yeah, he crushed me. I just resigned. Um, I was just totally getting crushed. Symmetrical B4, B5. What do we do now? What was your most embarrassing blitz loss in an over the board rated tournament? It's kind of a weird question. You mean like blitz tournaments? I probably wouldn't really remember. You don't really remember your blitz games too much. At least I don't. It all happens too fast. I can remember long games. And I haven't played that many blitz tournaments. You know, it's not like it's not like regular tournaments where they're they're happening that often. Um, I've never actually played a FIDE Blitz event. I was thinking about that. This this whole concept of Blitz, um, Blitz time control or whatever, by the way, having Blitz rated events. Have I ever beaten by a five-year-old? I mean, I don't know that I've even played any five-year-olds. Five's kind of extreme, Lord and S. I mean, 
I don't think I've ever played a five-year-old, like literally. Most kids don't start till like four or five, and in order to play me, they'd have to be, they'd have to be like at least <laughs> like 1900 or something. So I usually start off at around seven or eight, losing to seven, eight-year-olds. No, seriously. Seriously, I don't think I've ever lost anybody under the age of 10. When I was a teenager, maybe I, I mean, I was, when I was 13, I might have lost to like a 10 year old or something like that. I've evaded losing to some like young kids like last year. I played a 11 year old, a 10 year old, um, and managed to not lose. I've got, yeah, I've, I've got my, my system. I just know when to offer draws or repetition. Hmm. Oh no. He has bishop f6 here. That was a serious news flash. This player just crushed me once already. You lost when I was 17 to a five year old? Okay, it's a 5 0 blitz event. I seriously don't think I've ever lost to any children under the age of 10 in my life. I do remember one loss very painfully when I was about 13. I lost to a little kid. Maybe he was about nine or 10. I remember being embarrassed about it at the time. It was like a quad. And there was a little kid, he was like a, he was a relative prodigy. I mean, he was probably like nine and I was 13. At the time it affected me. That was a big deal, you know, losing to a nine year old. When you're 13, you really notice those kind of things um, or really think about it. Last year I had a little kid who was like 10 or 11 where I was lost, but I managed to to get a draw from a completely, completely lost position. But I was pretty upset during the game. His father and his coach were like in the next room analyzing the position on the board um, right outside the tournament hall. And I thought that was like completely inappropriate. They kept like coming into the room and, and then like, you know, analyzing the position. I mean, my opponent could have just like walked outside and seen his coach analyzing the position on the board easily. It was really, really kind of insane. Um, so I had to like talk to the arbiter and, and ask him to like keep an eye on them, which is just totally, it shouldn't have, it shouldn't be necessary. I mean, there's no way you should have to be distracted from your game worrying about whether or not your opponent is is potentially analyzing uh, analyzing the position on the board. It was just really bad behavior by the little kids. The little kids like father and, and coach. The kid was nice, but that's just, this should never happen. This is a strange position. This guy seems inordinately good. Chess 960 expert. F3 was my original intention here. I guess we should stick with that. No, I mean, then the knight's coming to D5. Let's not. Let's not and say we did. But this player seems extremely good. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of masters now at the age of 10. It's not unusual. So I wasn't too embarrassed. Because the little kid that I almost lost to was like 2100 feet A. A 
c3 is weak, has been called. Apparently this player is some sort of expert on chess 960, but it's very strange because his vast majority of games are in Blitz, Rapid, and Classical, and he has only six games in chess 960, okay? That's a little weird. He's especially good at chess 960, yet he doesn't play it. Is, is it just me, or is that strange? He has like a secret account for playing chess 960, but this is not it. It's obvious, you know. Um, there's a secondary account where he must only play chess 960. But for some reason, he challenges me to chess 960 with this account. Yeah, it's obviously multiple accounts. There's no way you're this good at chess 960 without practicing constantly. You can tell already, like, the way he played is is excellent. Um, now the knight coming to e5 could be a major problem. You don't get this good at chess 960 by playing six games. There's no way. You're toasting unevenly. Maybe I can play bishop f2, getting this pathetic bishop in the game. I feel very uncomfortable. I never play chess 960 practically, like one game a week at the most. But we were talking about chess 960, so it makes sense to play a chess 960. Chess are a pissed. Mule Skinner's here. Mule Skinner's rating is totally low. Mule Skinner, you're better than that. Lord and us and Tau Disciple with a new account. I'm not going to take Tau Disciple. It's rated and it's a new account. That's the guy who played me the first two games. His third account, I think. All right. Um, trying to liberate. I want to play g4, but I'm very concerned about g6. What would happen if g4, g6, g5, g takes h, excuse me, g takes f, g takes f, rook takes g1, knight takes g1, could, like sacrifice a piece? Probably wouldn't be sound, would it? Okay, his other moves on g4, bishop g5, particularly annoying. Bishop g5 is, is an idea right straight away here. Right straight away, it's it's kind of a huge problem. So I think I'm screwed already. Basically, I can I can resign. My king is unsafe. My king is unsafe. He played bishop g5. Surprising, isn't it? Basically, losing a pawn. He doesn't go for it. That was kind of surprising. He played h5, essentially a random move. Okay, if he took on e4, he had this f7 in some positions was hanging. Actually, he had to play bishop takes d2, followed by bishop takes d2, pawn takes e4, and then queen takes f7 was unclear, I guess. For lack of a better idea, Gotta redeploy. 
Now we cast some King's Side. He missed Knight takes F5 in one moment there. actually winning but I don't like my game you know I think I was I was seriously worse couldn't he just take couldn't he just take on on d2 like bishop takes d2 here around the time what was it he played castles I played castles he could play bishop takes d2 he's plus 0.8 there and he played bishop g5 now I played king b1 I thought I was seriously in, in big trouble, but I guess bishop takes d2, bishop takes d2, takes here. I have this f7, so it's actually not not lost for me. Kind of a, a tough game, but h5 was a very weird move. He was definitely better here, but it's not easy to play. Okay, the chess engine doesn't agree. It's saying it's like equal here. I just feel like every chess 960, I play the opening badly. All right, guys, let's continue. Um, chess are a pissed. This is a new opponent. What's up, everyone? Don't forget to tell your friends about my stream. We're streaming six days a week, Monday to Friday and Sundays. This Sunday, I have a simul. We'll let the panda handle the announcement. Chess panda. Okay, guys, listen, we've got a simul on Sunday. It's going to be 30-30 time control. It's uh, 6.30 p.m. CEST, Central European Summertime. And um, we reserve the right to start a little bit late because William has a game in the morning. So we don't know what time he's going to get back uh, from the team championship, the Hungarian team championship. So Sunday at 6.30 p.m., possibly as late as 7 Okay, so we'll see you guys there. It's a long simul. We're going to play 20 plus players, 30, 30 time control. Good luck. Um, sorry to keep you waiting here. It's uh, chess or a pissed. Like a chess therapist. Why don't they get the announcement out there? Let's play in Aliakin's defense. Yes, Bob. You can only come up with controversial controversial ideas. Fish Brad Cow says, what? Your toaster. Toaster discussion. Toaster.org. You guys can check out the forum there at toaster.org. This is a sharp line, the C5. Knight takes d5, however, not very common. That's a strange move. Normally it's bishop c4. I haven't played the Aliakin's defense too much of late. Aliukin. Okay, d6. d6 is the principled move. f6 is probably overrated. <laughs> we could play b6. I feel like I've got a break in the center here. The chess oropist, 2000 exactly. I mean, this is objectively the correct way to play with black. Bishop b5, putting pressure. I recommend it very highly. 
Putting pressure on, on the Nimzovici and control of e5. Unfortunately, losing a piece, but you can't have everything. Bishop g4 here. Is bishop g4 asking too much from the position? Perhaps. Queen b6. I gotta get my king out of the center here. He takes with the knight. Yeah, I mean, you can read into his name. It's like therapist. He just misspelled it. <laughs> Does Carlson have a boat? That's a weird question. Oh, it's not a question. It's like a statement of fact. Are you surprised that Magnus Carlson has a boat? He lives in freaking Norway. They have fjords everywhere and stuff like that. He fishes for Greenland shark. I don't know, man. There's all kinds of cool stuff he can probably do with his millions of dollars. All right. Man, you got to get a boat when you have millions of dollars. It's pretty much automatic. It would be like one of my first investments. Even if I didn't have millions of dollars, just a few hundred thousands, I would definitely buy a boat. It would be on the top five things to do. You know for sure he has a van? All right, so taking, taking, and taking, and then check on b5, but I can play knight to c6. Then he can pressurize the d5 pawn. On the other hand, I can play bishop somewhere else, like bishop h5. Gotta watch out for e6, potentially. Now he's secured his pawn. Now I kind of wish I hadn't done what I did. Kind of wish really asking for it here. I made a huge mistake not playing bishop takes f3 and then taking on e5 there. Now I'm just slightly worse. He probably rides around in the back of his parents' minivan. Well, he was doing that for a while, but I think he quit that after a, after a point. Um, whoa. Does anyone know what just happened? All right. You're trying to bluff me. Feels like a bluff, this move. Queen takes, I mean, I could even play pawn takes. is one move to get out of the way we got to be able to get ourselves one move here okay knight d2 I could even sacrifice my queen sacrifice of queen is definitely possible <laughs> Knight 
Okay, this guy is pretty scary. It's a pretty new account, right? He's 34. Games in Crazy House. Oh, no. I allowed this? No, he was supposed to take the other way. See, I get confused when I expect one capture and the guy takes the other way. He was supposed to take the other way and he confused me. Now it's like equal. Alright, well that's the best I can do. I mean, to equalize. I was under a lot of pressure. I'm happy with, with just getting equal. I didn't even consider any sort of G4 business. He seems pretty strong. <laughs> 2,000, exactly. 1,800 in bullet. That's not too impressive. All right. What's going on now? I must played a really bad move. I'm just sort of making random moves. <laughs> bishop f6. I was looking at bishop c5, like getting myself pinned to rook. Or queen b5, actually. Bishop c5 might basically like lose by force. No, but then I have bishop takes f2 check, duh. Duh. But if you consider how fast he's played and how well, then you like wonder about his bullet rating. Why is he 1800 in bullet? He missed rook d1 there. I mean, he set to my draw, but he has two minutes more. I mean, this is equality at best for black. Let's check out the game. So, yeah, it's really weird. I mean, nobody plays knight takes d5. It's very, very strange. Literally, I don't think this move is even really seriously discussed in Alakine's defense books. He just plays this. I mean, who would play this opening and, and then play a move that's like move six, he's out of book? He made one mistake the whole game. Bishop d3. So now we've transposed. We've transposed most likely by a different order of moves to some real games. Hodgson versus Ole, Korneyev with one game. Looks like the vast majority of players prefer bishop e2 to bishop d3, but I guess there's nothing to fear, really. You know, this pin is... I'm not even sure bishop g4 is my best move. It might be safer to play de. Apparently he made one inaccuracy. Um... I might be better off playing bishop b7. I didn't know that. Here. Yeah, here he should have played like in the game, but bishop f4 immediately, securing the pawn on e5. Instead, he played h3. I think I think I should just take here on f3 and just try to make a draw. Bishop takes, queen takes, knight takes e5. Bishop here, check, knight c6, and rook d1. And I'm just playing for a draw. You know, I think... The engine says this is better for white. But I mean, I guess I have reasonable drawing chances. Did he actually make a mistake in the game? Queen d7 here. This is an inaccuracy, apparently. e6 is the best move according to the engine.
for a moment. Mm -hmm. So how did he make a mistake? He played knight d2. Rook e1. Now his only inaccuracy in the whole game was knight d2. Bishop takes e4. What's he supposed to do? Queen a4. Okay, I mean, if he finds that move, he's definitely a computer. I mean, that's just that's just too too accurate. He couldn't find that, so he settled for knight d2. And now I'm supposed to play f5, apparently. We go Steinitz and sack a piece, I guess. You just sack a piece. And if castles... You basically have to be Frank Marshall to play like this. Pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn. We win the piece back, or do we even win a piece back? We don't. We're just down a piece. Computer says this is like winning for white. Okay, well, he's pretty suspicious. Extremely strong game by white there. One inaccuracy. Um, I feel lucky to draw. Mule Skinner, you're up next. No, Queen A4 is not natural, Bob. It's an extremely weird move. If he found that, I would, you know, definitely say he was a computer. Already he played really well for an 1800. Um... All right, I didn't find F5. I definitely considered it. We didn't analyze. We couldn't analyze everything. All right, Mule Skinner, I can't play the Sicilian. Mule Skinner has refuted the Sicilian, ladies and gentlemen. I just can't do that anymore, Mule Skinner. I can't play the Grand Prix attack. It just makes me ill. Um, it's a pin, yeah. It is, but it's like the sudden motion to the queen side, which... I think we're focusing on the center. I mean, you can't argue that queen a4 is, is a normal, average, everyday move in that position. I don't think you can say that. It's it's a kind of move to the side that's... Uh, when it looks like all the focus is on the center, suddenly you're throwing your queen out to the queen side. It, it definitely doesn't seem intuitive to me. <clears throat> this is our best chance against Mule Skinner. To force him to play some kind of open position because he he's just too good at closed positions. We've played a lot of games in this line too. I mean this is the draw variation. But I want to play for a win, so I play g6. I'm lucky I didn't sack my queen for the bishop and rook. Well I knew deep down that it wasn't enough. You know, I would do it if I had literally no other choice. that's not a real sacrifice it's <laughs> it's like probably just no coordination for me c5 this is kind of an unusual sideline but i can't blame white for playing that i don't like playing the tarash either the proper tarash thank you guys for subscribing supporting the stream if you can play make a small donation to uh to the channel. I appreciate it. How is the stream today, guys? A little bit better with the uh, with the lag? We've been getting complaints about lag since I started using um, this the Streamlabs OBS, and I probably have to tune up some, some settings or something, but it seems like it was maybe a little bit better today than as opposed to yesterday. Guys, I have a day off tomorrow. Then we're going to be streaming on Sunday. Simul, as Panda announced, 6.30 Simul. So please be here. Join us. Mill Skinner um, is with us. He took a long time in this move. Mill Skinner, what's up with the long think on Bishop D3? It actually seems like a strange move. Normally you play Bishop B5. This is a Tarash Swedish variation, they call it. The Swedish variation with c4, normally colors reversed. A reversed Swedish variation. Don't, I can't do Swedish. All right. Gautam says, please play a game. My idea is Tal Dis Disciple. I already challenged you for a college, a college college game, casual game. Tal Disciple, I don't play people who don't have like established accounts. It's just because of that. And, and plus the fact that you, you challenged me to a rated game on the last challenge. But I just don't play people who have less than 100 rated games that just came to uh, 
to chess to Lee Chess. Please establish like a hundred games, and then maybe like you know next time we can play. I don't play people troll me with new accounts and stuff like that. We have a very firm policy of not playing anybody until they have an established rating. Bishop e3 makes sense. This bishop, it doesn't do anything on d3. I mean, you're just hitting the g6 pawn. That doesn't seem right. It either goes, it either goes here or it goes to e2. Typically, Mule Skinner. Usually, b5 gives you the the vice grip on the e5 square. So. I guess it has one point he keeps he's keeping my knight off of e4 here otherwise might be an idea Alexandria princess play French I like it um, I rarely play the French but mule Skinner let's see and what does mule Skinner play against e4 mule Skinner plays the French this is a problem that's why I don't want to play the French now I don't normally play the French anyway <laughs> But just to add to my woes is the fact that he's actually a French defense player. Arsenal fan, what's up? Well, I'm going to trade here. We can break with e5. Isn't that just strong? It equalizes. But I don't know if I'm better. Oh man, actually. Whew, that's brutal. Does this move practically like win? I don't know what he's gonna do. Yeah, we already answered that. It's alright, Lord and Ass. Lord and Ass. The C3 setups is Arsenal talking about and just gain long-term diagonal pressure. Idea is that after A3, you can put it on A2. You're talking about bishops, obviously. But how is bishop going to, to A2? I missed something here in the, in the program. Arsenal must be talking about playing CD and like bishop c4 and a3 or a3 and then on dc bishop c4 I mean Skinner certainly played like that in the past I think he's experimenting with something new with c5 here but he's got blasted in the center this is the whole point you know like he takes pressure off of d5 then the drawback of that is that I can pound the center with, with e5 because there's no more pressure on d5 he doesn't have enough pressure here so I'm hitting with e5 very strong. Usually black tries to play knight before. Oh, you treat it to b1, then reroot. Okay. I'm talking about this. Um, this would be off center for me. I won't do that, of course, unless I have a good reason. You can see how my knight is supporting this the central square. is really vital here. Now he's in trouble. I mean, I'm threatening a peace fork. I'm threatening two peace forks at the same time, literally. I guess white is just lost. It's sort of insane. Can you play bishop b5? And on pawn takes pawn, play bishop takes c6. I mean, your whole position would be torn asunder, but you might not lose a piece. <laughs> but I mean, the basic problem is that after pawn takes pawn, knight takes, he just moves his queen to protect the bishop, and I play d4, and he's just dropped a piece. There's literally, like, no move. Threatening three forks. How's it three? I thought it's just two. So bishop g5. His idea is queen f4. Oh no. He was crafty here, found some sort of way out. But is he still dead? He's still dead. But I'm actually not winning a piece now. 
There's a slight issue that he can just move his piece away. So Bishop B1, Arsenal fan, he is a genius. He He's seen the future, and it's not good. Arsenal fan has seen the future. But whatever it is, it's, it's very, very ugly for white. But there doesn't seem to be a direct crushing blow. Knight e6. <clears throat> takes, takes, takes. The massive position for black. I'm just looking for some sort of knockout, but it doesn't seem to be here. I must have made a mistake, Houston. All right, whatever. Did I blunder? Not really. I mean, this is just very good for black. So we didn't win um, material directly there. Rolling, rolling and ravishing. But he's done a good job to survive. An uncomfortable, <laughs> uncomfortable possibility. The long diagonal is an uncomfortable. Did you talk about the long diagonal, Arsenal fan? Was that you? Uncomfortable. An uncomfortable situation in general. Okay, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? We're just winning. I mean, but he's about to get away, essentially. I mean, it's, it's clearly a horrible situation for white. I'm sure this wasn't the best move, but probably his wasn't either. such a messed up position there's a little problem with coordinating here it's amazing how difficult it is to actually put him away he still has defense with with queen c1 d3 if he plays knight c3 now I've picked the pawn up so he has to play like rook knight elsewhere and it's it's awful for white. Well, he still should play knight c3, I guess, ultimately. And be down two pawns. It was a horrible, horrible situation. Um, but he did a credible job defending an otherwise awful situation. What, what are you going to do after e5? Like, there's literally no move for white. This actually happened in a game. Lars Carlsen was a little kid. He's like a Norwegian grandmaster, right? 1976, Lars Carlsen was probably, he was probably 15 years old. Um, all right. Yeah, he's literally just busto. Novelty, bishop g5, it's minus four after that. e4, excuse me, e4, um, queen f4. And I don't know why I just didn't take here. There's really no no explanation to what made me play knight takes d4. It's a very strange decision to take this, but it's equally interesting. This wasn't a bad variation, actually. I thought you would take here on f6, though, Mule Skinner. This seemed like the best practical chance. I think Arsenal was talking about this line, something like this. White's position is like a house of cards. This, this is cover your eyes you know I mean it, it's really horrible for white you know even though he's actually only one pawn down in this position it's like much much worse than that okay guys we have like 45 minutes left in the stream we're gonna play 
the remainder of these challenges. Arsenal is best. Are the matches over? Too early for football. <laughs> Got dual Arsenal, dueling Arsenals in the in the stream today, asking if the matches are over. The matches haven't yet begun. Um, that's tonight. No, do we have football season? Yeah. It's always football season. I like making fun of you guys. All right. I'm an American. I have to make fun of soccer. That's my job. Knight C3. But living in Hungary has changed my, my outlook. I mean, football is one of the only popular sports here. So I have to get used to it. Knight C3. I played the first league season of game last night. <laughs> Playing board forward in first division. That sounds like a reason to go drinking. If I've ever heard one. You can... If you, if you lose, you have an excuse. If you win, you have an excuse. If your game, you know, was postponed, you have an excuse. I'm just kidding around. All right, knight c3, a6. Um, Alexandria lives in Canada. Well, I mean, I imagine that, that, like, you know, soccer, a.k.a. football, is pretty evenly treated in, in America and the U.S. and Canada. In the Americas, of course, in the Americas would include South and Central America, where it's much more popular. Knight c3, a6. This is throwing me off, man. That's a weird move. Um, it seems weirder in chess 960 than it would be, you know, in normal chess to play a6. You got back at 1 a.m. All right. Knight c6 here. Now he's starting to play good moves. This is just a to throw me off move. Just a move to throw me off, make him think, make me think that he's weak when he's really strong. Arsenal won. Congratulations! I also had my first uh, team championship game this weekend. I was hoping Clash Kid would be here because um, it's possible I'll play an Austrian IM, and I know nothing about him. So I thought maybe it was like a player that that Clash Kid had heard of. There's this guy. Gert Schneider, it's a middle-aged Austrian IM who I know nothing about. So I was hoping our one Austrian subscriber would have like at least heard something about this guy, how he plays. It looks like I'll get an IM 2400, one one of two different guys, either the Austrian middle-aged guy or or a, a young Hungarian IM. But I'll get the white. The white bits arsenal, as Hebby would say. The Hebster. Um, my bishop, my bishop now feels kind of limited. It's just going to be hunt the hunted. He's going to play b5 right on it. In a way, it was weird to play bishop c4 in, into the oncoming traffic of b5. I just realized. How about castling? I think I'd rather live my life on the king's side now. I don't know why. If I have an early commitment, he can start throwing pawns at me like Mama Jarov. Um, Developing is usually a good idea. I'm, I'm not happy that I decided to do this now. That bishop looks really good. My bishop doesn't look really good. Both our bishops on a1 and, and a8 are going to be pretty sad throughout the game. End up hedgehoggy. I shouldn't have committed my king too early. Okay, the, the, this was obviously bound to happen at some point. I mean, I can't avoid. I could play b4, though. Kind of a weird move. Whoa. Maybe b4 is actually good. b4, knight takes c4, bc5. I'm a little worried about my c5 pawn and its future. b4, knight takes c4, d takes c4. Would change the whole game. We could knock out that bishop on c5 though. That my pawn though, my pawn becomes very sketchy after that. b4, knight takes c4, bc5, knight. 
knight a5. <clears throat> okay, let's try it. I mean, it's something kind of weird. I'm, I'm concerned that my pawn on c5 becomes a weakness if I recapture there. But on the other hand, it's not that easy to attack it. What's he going to attack it with? His queen f8? In the meantime, maybe we can stir something up. There's also knight a3, but that leaves his knight in a very precarious place. Certainly take this way too. All right, let's let's change. We all we we just lied about everything. We're changing our plan. We're just changing our plan. And this this bishop almost feels like it might be relevant. I still don't trust my position. It doesn't seem right. Arsenal is best. We have to clarify now which Arsenal we're talking about would have done bishop takes g8. But I think that liberates his queen. Um, this is obviously a bad piece right now. It's debatable. You know, do you really want to do that? Of course, that knight could come and kill me. You know, it looks like this is a very ominous sort of thing. You know how happy I am to just get rid of that? For my bishop to function at all, <laughs> it's like a miracle. Actually, he could try to do the same thing, maybe play b6 and take my knight out with his bishop on a8. I prefer if he didn't, quite frankly. Meanwhile, my queen is hurting. Um, we getting my king side, but no, we have a clear plan here. The pawn, the his favorite move. Hey guys, you guys like the uh, the light up from heaven coming down on the board? We've got a problem with the with the shade, so try to bear with us. Okay, technical problems. Um, don't forget to play h4. That's my favorite move. Chess Ponda, get up there, climb up there, and, and try to fix the window, please. The queen is in the game. I like white now. But don't forget he can still castle. That's really scary sometimes with Chess 960. You forget castling is even possible. A4 now. No, I mean, okay, if I could play a4, a5, and he promised not to castle kingside, I'd probably think about it. Uh-oh. All right. There, um... we got to keep him off of f4. The huge, huge problem. If he gets in there, we're, we're, our position just falls apart. Um, if he plays c6, that's fine. You know, I think we're just temporarily biding our time. If he wants to play c6, his bishop is is blocked out anyway. So, difficult position for black spatially. He decided to do that. But it looks like normal chess for the first time at this point. Of course, you have to realize his king can actually castle either side. Wait, did he move a rook? He hasn't moved his rooks, has he? He, he moved here? Wait, no, I, I moved my rook. He hasn't touched his rooks. So he can castle either side. Now white just has a space advantage. You were, you were down five pawns for a piece and it was 0, 0.0. Sounds like an adventure, Arsenal fan. I hope that I don't have too many draws this year, like last year. I was playing too conservatively. But I wish the round started later. I can't stand when it's like 10 o'clock in the morning. It's just, that's harsh. Pawns should be protected by pawns. Now he can't castle kingside. He's actually tied down to d7. He or she, actually. We don't know. Lord Ananas could be a female. But if you're named Lord, you could be a pop musician. Then he'd have an E at the end. It would be If he was female, he would be Lord E Ananas. Um, King d8. Just trying to walk away to the other side. Oh man, what do we do? The queenside expansion. 
It's like a, a bad King's Indian for black. It's better for blood pressure to have dull games. I agree, man. My age. <laughs> Yeah, don't rub it in. Getting up there. Can't believe I'm old. I was just young a short time ago. All right, what are we going to play? Like C5 break, how to execute it. FC1 and and pa pow. Sound effects. One day I'm young, the next day I'm old. There was nothing in between. Oh no, there's a check. We can improve my queen position. Highly incisive. It's not made. He was probably like freaked out. No, but I improved my queen position by one square. Highly useful. I could also play queen f5 actually. I'm trying to target that pawn there. Now I'm, I'm being fancy. We're improving our queen position. Little by little. Don't put your king on f7 or else I have like knight g5 check. Ah, oh, this is this is brutal though. Okay, he can still try to run away, but I'll, I'll land a knight on g5 and into e6. It'll just be terminal. You're getting teased for looking 50. Yeah. Somebody on the stream actually said I looked like I was 50 last week and I freaked out. People usually think I'm younger than I am. It's rare that I get people to think that I'm older than I am. That that hit me, that hit me really hard. It's like, what are you talking about? They must be like just trolling me to make me feel bad. <laughs> Queen e6 check and just break through on the seventh, and it's over. It's all over, guys. It was an instructive positional game. All right, that's it for chess 960. We've got time for two more games, guys. Alexandria Rose and Zen Chess. Zen Chess, thank you for sending in the, um, thank you for sending in, this is actually a new account. Um, I'll let, I'll let it slide. The only, the only time we have is for two games. Just don't play like a Grandmaster Alexandria Rose, please. That would make me regret like letting someone without a hundred games play. Um, ninety two. Kali system move order, possible stonewall attack. They can do this sneaky stonewall attack move order. Looks like that's what they're trying to do here. In fact, Yakov Norowitz plays like literally plays the stonewall attack. Um. Yeah. This is a very specific move order. Although knight d2 in the stone attack probably isn't a great move, is it? If you think about it. You're not supposed to generally do that in a normal stone wall. Put your knight on d2. I was going to say thank you for sending in the white skin game. Now, I already mentioned it twice. Um, yesterday's stream and again today. So... Thank you for sending in the white skin game. I actually... I thought I had it, but I'm not sure I do now. No, I mentioned that, man. That's cool. He found that. Thanks for sending it in. G3 now. Okay, there's a long diagonal. There may be some light on the board. Slim fill board. A way younger person definitely guessed my, my age wrong. Um, Sure, it happens all the time. No, I think it was a little kid. I mean, of course. That's why, you know, what's the difference between, like, people who are, like, 40 and 50 when you're, like, five years old, you know? I mean, you can't <laughs> can't differentiate, like, that. Why does weaken the long diagonal? I think that's, that's a little bit of a questionable thing here, having played G3. I just realized, no, I'm just saying that Jakob Norowitz plays the Stonewall attack. Like, not too many people, credible masters, play the Stonewall attack for real, you know. I'm just thinking, like, who 
who could teach their students to play the Stonewall Attack? That's the only example I could really think of. From a strong player, you know. I mean, most masters kind of look down on the Stonewall Attack as like a kind of, kind of crappy, lame setup, you know, that's like tricky, lame setup that, that you normally wouldn't teach people to play, especially with the white pieces. But actually, maybe it's not that bad. I mean, Norwitz is very systematic, and, and he has a kind of unique um, way of looking at the game. So I think it's given me a little bit of pause for thought when people do this kind of stuff. Right, right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, he has some strange philosophies. But he has a very unique style, you know, and then I appreciate that kind of non-standard approach exactly Zen chess I'm not I don't know I didn't take lessons with him or something I don't know you know but it just seems like he has a unique approach I just remember him playing the stonewall attack against me in blitz and being very impressed by you know how this this person has gone to the lengths to, to play such an opening you know so well alright too many pawn moves here for white though with h3 is it seems like it's going too far. You've gone too far. This has gone too far. A little bit similar to my game with, with Merle, but now this this weakness on this diagonal is going to be costly for White. I think the, the two diagonals. H3 was the final straw. I mean, her position was probably okay until that. Should have played another move, not H3. Now the H3 G3 weakness but it's hard to play the stonewall attack when the opponent doesn't play d5 move 11 had a game I don't think he's here now one of my students who's a subscriber to the stream he had a game against the guy I showed last night our subscriber stream where the guy played f4 and d4 on move 1 and move 2 the problem is if you play the Dutch or Bird's opening or whatever and the opponent doesn't play d5, it's not really a Dutch, you know, it's it's something else. And and I think that's what I'm trying to do here by not playing d5. We're trying to refute White's setup. I mean, White did play f4, when was it? On move, move 7. If I had played d5, f4 is very appropriate. But if I can try to challenge Black at, at e5, what I'm trying to do is challenge their entire, their entire setup effectively. This move might be slightly inaccurate. But she she went into what I was hoping for. She could have played C D and, and, and interpolated this exchange on D four first. But now white's just getting broken. The king is too open here. She had interpolated that exchange. Maybe it's not totally hopeless if we play this at this point. I suspect it's lost anyway. But I think this at least is, gives us a hope. This diagonal is too strong. So white probably shouldn't play g3 on move 8 and I suspect this this is this is to protect f4, you know, basically from my queen on c7, which is a normal thing, but you might be able to play something different. I don't know. See, the problem is they don't want to play this and like have to lose a pawn. With like pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn. Though I, sometimes I've seen this played as a pawn sacrifice. You might legitimately, like, legitimately be able to sacrifice a pawn for something like this. Okay, guys. Like last game. Um, no, not last game. We have time for maybe two last games. Zen chess and uh, and whoever that was. Arsenal. Arsenal two. Zen Chess is pretty pretty credible player. He's tanked his rating down to 2,040. Um, he should be a little higher than that, probably. 
Taking on e4 was a nice find. I would have hesitated to play that. Wait, taking on e4, you're talking about something else. You meant a different square. No? Arsenal 1 and Arsenal 2. Thing 1 and Thing 2. Zenches has vast knowledge. So, too many weak squares with g3 and h3 last game for white. Too many pawn moves. It's a lot of pawn moves. I just played d5 in the wrong position. Feels bad. I meant to play d6. <laughs> Can I have a take back? Oh no. No, this is, this is some kind of terrible... Now I've played some sort of terrible opening. Oh my god. I'm supposed to play d6 against knight f3. Alright. Now it's a bad Scandinavian. You seriously want to give me a take back? Well, you gotta give me two take backs. I didn't mean to play d5. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you. Just for the sake of having an interesting opening battle. Um, because I just don't think that d5 is good. Very well. Thank you for the take back. Um, it transposes to a bad skin in Evian, though. My knight is on c6, and it's not a credible variation. It's it's just not good. There was this guy, Reprintsev, who used to play... He used to play the proper Scandinavian, and then he would play knight c6. He had some weird lines. But I think, you know, it's just not good for black. Bob, that's getting the weirdest question for the week award. All right, the weak players with lots of knowledge versus the strong players with little knowledge. Okay, these these people are are just really fake news, for the first, <laughs> for the most part. Um, of course, people like that exist, Bob, but it's not a problem that we have every day. Running into the strong players with little knowledge and the the weak players with lots of knowledge. Could you play knight f six in Portuguese gambit? No, my knight's on c six arsenal. Um, I mean that's just a messed up position that's probably a line for me I can take with the queen and try to play but it's just I have no clue what I'm doing there your arsenal one and the other arsenal is arsenal two by default you have to be arsenal one because you're first the first arsenal in our stream okay so Zenchest is playing probably white's best line here I guess He could even conceivably castle queenside with this sort of setup, although it's not that common with h3. So I guess we can castle. I'm trying to remember what I looked at here. <clears throat> Generally in the Pierce, this is a Pierce nimzovich hybrid. Generally in the Pierce, you don't want to castle too early because you can be castling into a very strong attack. But I think the fact that he's played h3 Stops those maniac h4 h5 pushes. You know, he's going to be down a tempo in that kind of line. So I think that I'm justified in, in castling, whereas normally I might not be able to say that. Now, the other possibility is e5 here. It's not the most flexible. After e5, he could exchange or push or just even keep the tension. So he has tons of options. Something more hyper modern here. I, I prefer maybe a five, a six. But I don't c count myself as as being any sort of knowledgeable player in the Pierce modern. I mean, I'm I'm totally like an amateur at this kind of opening. I, I played some games, but I don't know it well enough that I feel like I I really you know am, am competent um, playing this against strong players. Now Zenchest played queen d2 but now he plays a4 so that's basically saying I'm not going to castle queenside which is interesting news if I played rook b8 he can play a5 and kind of garner a serious space advantage so I'm thinking 
we, we play e5 now but if I play e5 now I'm gonna have to play d5 knight back to like e7 with a kind of passive position not sure what my plan is there so in other words maybe I would prefer to, to, to maintain flexibility here but what do I do like rook b8 a5 there I could probably push okay rook b8 um, d5 let's see where do I go yeah I have problems uh, similar to King's Indian lines all right then maybe Bishop d7 we have to consider everything here Rook b8 d5 for white, no good squares. Even that's not impossible though, I could put my knight on b4. And then try to support it. Alright, let's do it, we gotta do something. I don't know what he's planning here. So d5, similar to a king's indian, I'm gonna play knight b4. I play a5 if I have to after that. Um, I don't think my knight will ever get trapped. He could try to trap it with d5 knight before um, a5, stopping me from physically playing a5. But it's still... I can defend the knight on, on b4 with c5, and it's a very long, very, very long... Uh, path for him to play c3 physically trapping my knight on b4 I mean a lot of things have to happen before that I don't know if I could 100% guarantee my knight won't get trapped but other options don't look very appealing knight e5 knight a5 knight a7 is out so that's why I was thinking like a lot about rook b8 here maybe I ought to play e5 but again after d5 it seems like white has space advantage um the bishop d7 could be could be a way of playing without committing myself to a direct plan. I, I think the d5 is still a good move, though. It looks like the safest approach for black is to just go ahead and play e5 straight away. I could certainly play it now. But I think that the d5 knight e7 leaves white with an advantage play something like g4 and just not castle all right it's my turn what's the plan now b5 possible to play b5 Now this is crazy fear. B5, A, B, A, B, bishop takes B5. What am I thinking? Bishop takes B5, knight takes E4. Queen D3, knight takes C3, bishop takes C6, and my knight is trapped? Are you serious? A, B, A, B, bishop takes B5, knight takes E4. Is that for real? Okay, we have ideas here. So a b a b bishop takes b five bishop takes b five knight takes e four queen d three and then knight b four queen takes e four bishop f five with a tactic against f two a c two be like arsenal f two. All right, it was too good to be true. I'm looking at this line a b a b bishop takes b five knight takes e four queen d three. No, he probably has to just take there. Just want to make sure. I played a game 
That wasn't his name. It was Chess Oropist. Bishop d3. Zen chess is going to make me lose on time. <laughs> 6 a.m. 6 a.m. there. That's correct. 6.17 a.m. Mr. Bob. After all said and done, I mean, white's been very solid. But he didn't, he didn't chew, do anything too aggressive. This is good. It secures his center. Now I have a lack of counterplay. I guess I should have played B4, for better or for worse. I shouldn't be afraid of E5. I mean, I think that move is inflexible. Creates a lot of weaknesses. This is getting a little too weird now. Maybe on E5 I have B4. Wow, this was unexpected. Here comes another knight. Could have played e5 there. Whoa. What's going on? Oh no. Tactical melee has begun. close in game ah that pawn is seriously going to get out of control are you serious Looks pretty drawish. I don't think I had a win. He doesn't have any problem here. He can lose this pawn. Just don't trade rooks. It's a draw. I could try to flag him, but I mean, it's really childish. So, 
All right. Um, no way to win that position. You could philosophically win, but good game. Yeah, I mean, I think the game was decent. We had one last game against Arsenal, too. I'm not sure anybody ever had, like, a win. The sirens sound American, Bob? Are you serious? What city do you live in? They sound like Parisian ambulances to me. This wasn't a bad game. I'm curious about the opening, actually. So there's some theory here. It looks like everybody played e5, except for the guys that played a6. See who played a6. Carlson Magnus. Magnus Carlson. It's very funny. I told you guys before that I had a, a master at the chess club in Boston named Carl Magnuson. Little did he know that his name would be the world champion one day. One last game. Let me just see the, the theory here. So a4, rook b8 is a novelty. Rook b8 is a novelty, guys. I thought a long time on this move. It looks like everyone plays e5 for lack of a better move. But I'm not sure that's the best move. Because bishop d7 should be considered. Like I was saying, trying to play something more flexible than e5 to me seems like more interesting. Okay, Arsenal is best. Last game for today, guys. Our last game was... That's crazy. Our last four games were draws. Um, good job. What is your USCF rating, Zanchez? Are you even 2100? 2100s? He's going to tell me he's like 1800. C4 Arsenal is best. Both Arsenals have been known to play C4. Alright, let's play E5. We'll repeat our Moksudlu game. Your USCF is only 1984. It was a good year. Um, I think I got my first my first subscription to Chess Life when you were born. Maybe the maybe the following year. I can't remember. Okay, um, Knight C3. No, he's not born in 1984. That's his rating, guys. I realize that. All right, let's try something crazy. This should be for g3. Did we have this already? We probably had this already, and I was like lamenting not playing bishop takes c3. I have a bad score with this line with both colors. I played bishop b4 against Simon Williams, and I sacked the piece for like three pawns. Um... We'll just play a Grand Prix attack reversed. That's what I always try to do. Sanchez is like born in 79. All right. I did not have a subscription to Chess Life in 79. 79. What movies came out in 1979? Um, Bob probably knows the answer to that, Bob. I was just joking around. I don't literally want to know. You're old. Damn, dude. No shaming for oldness on my stream, all right? There will not be oldness shaming. It'd be immediately banned. The worst thing you can do on my stream is oldness shaming. And don't say I'm 50, ever. <laughs> Even what I am, because I won't accept that. Nineteen seventy nine. What did I do in nineteen seventy nine? That was a good part of my life. No responsibilities. The late seventies, it's a it's a dark movie era. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. A movie dark era. Apocalypse Now came out in 79. That's like one of my favorite movies ever. Never get out of the boat, Bob. Just remember. Possibly my favorite movie of all time. It's definitely in the top five. Sometimes I use that reference during the stream. 
But I like the original book. The Heart of Darkness was a great book. D6, and we've got the break along the F-file, so this has pretty much gone according to plan. There is an interesting question if I should take here. Probably I should. I mean, giving him isolated pawns on C3 and C4, that has to be good for me. Speaking of escape from Alcatraz, there's been a lot of like discussion recently in, in the in the conspiracy theory <laughs> world about whether or not you know those dudes actually escaped from Alcatraz or not. I mean, there seems to be a fair amount of evidence suggests that they might have really made it. A lot of TV shows going into that lately. Um, all right, let's just fix the queen side. Oh, Rocky too. I can't stand Sylvester Stallone. Ugh. He's so gross. All right, castles. Poor Rocky. And we just target the pawn. Target and take. Arsenal is best as burning his bridges behind him. Maybe we should just take with a pawn. Screw your knight, man. Even if you get your pawn to c5, I don't care. That ambulance is coming for Bob now. You think that sounds like an American ambulance? No. You need to have more ambulances, like, go right by your house at all hours of the day. You learn to appreciate the difference. Um, so c5, the lesser of the evils here. But I think he's just toastus. He's the toastus with the mostus. Bishop c4. Well, why not? It sounds like police irons, outdated ones. Yeah, it's it's more like that. It's it's awful. It sounds like a French movie or something to me. Those classic movie sirens. We're going to try to take his pawn away if we can get away with it. Arsenal's best structure has seen better days, but he found a way to defend the pawn. With the creative bishop b4, he's, he's doing a good job of hanging on. Seriously, no joke. And now he can play knight b3. I'm having trouble finishing him off. He's a survivor. Knight g4. At this point, he has like rook d1, which will, um, Keep him in business. Man, this is starting to get kind of irritating. He's got three minutes left. He's 1,500. He's defended this really, really well. Taking his horrible bishop off. He has another horrible bishop over there. Take, take, rook down. And I hope I don't get mated. Because now he has bishop c4. I mean, it looks like I'm better, but I don't know. You know, this bishop is like a bombist. Bombist style. Check me first. I guess he also has bishop h3. He seems like a damn good 1500. I mean... Come on, man. It's like pulling teeth to even win a pawn. 
Maybe I should just go after the B4 pawn and forget about the direct attack thing. Maybe I should have just gone here in the first place. Like rook d4. He has a fair amount of counterplay. With this bishop having durability, getting out to that diagonal over there to h3, maybe c4. Okay guys, this is the this is the end of the stream. We're gonna be out we'll be back on Sunday with our next stream, which is a simul. Okay. Uh so hurry it up. We gotta go. Next stream is Sunday. It'll be six thirty, maybe seven PM late start, depending on if William's tournament game can get started, okay? Uh can get finished. Sorry, we're a little bit you know, I need a martini <laughs> basically. Um it's martini time for us, okay? So yeah. Bishop H one not a good move. I alluded to a lot of different possibilities, but H1 wasn't one of them. That just doesn't seem like a healthy idea. What would move 11 do? Play for mate somehow. Knight G4, it's so tempting. There are some really insane tricks here. Most of them don't work, though. Should I just take the pawn? It's so materialistic. Taking the pawn. Knight g4. Let's wait and just chill for a minute. Do we get ourselves reset? Yeah, I think the bishop f h1 was a huge mistake. You're basically still alive there until bishop h1. But I'm suffering from time pressure. Time pressure issues. He can't really do much though. I mean, he can't even lift his rook or anything because he gets mated on the back rank. Bishop f3, it's lost now. But I think if not bishop f h1, you're probably putting up a good amount of resistance in this game. Okay, next stream, Simul Sunday. Thanks everybody for watching. Thanks for supporting the stream. Don't forget my videos on, uh, on YouTube. I do upload all the streams over there to YouTube Video Chess Training on YouTube. Please like and subscribe. We can basically just improve our pieces. I mean, king g6 to get out of the way. Now if I move my knight, there won't be any checks. Knight h5 was a scary follow-up. I missed that entirely, Arsenal. I honestly missed it completamente. But he's just... He's a goner now. He's going to lose all of his pawns now, literally. So it's probably a mate. I did not see knight h5. coordinated attack from the enemy pieces. Okay guys, thanks for watching and subscribing and we will see you on Sunday. So from the Panda and myself keep on playing chess and we'll see you guys 3030 Sunday simul 20 players. Okay guys, 3030 Sunday 630 p.m. Central European Summertime. I'll see you guys. Bye bye.